What's going on guys? Alex here with 814 EDC and today I'm ready to do my full review on the Quiet Carry Knives Drift LC. So this is a knife in from the Lefty Pass Around group and I believe JD for EDC, um, this is his knife that he put in for the Pass Around. So thank you JD. Um, I will leave a link to his channel down below. Please go check him out. He... <coughs> Excuse me. So we're going to jump right into this. Um, you guys know I'm a huge Quiet Carry fan. I have three of them in my collection. I've reviewed a ton of them via, you know, pass arounds and stuff like that. So I have come to be a very big fan of their knives, of their products, of, got some fuzz on there, <clears throat> excuse me, of basically everything that they've come out with, I've, or I've ever handled from them, I've enjoyed. Um, and this is definitely fitting in right with that criteria. But I do have a few questions and I do have a few sort of thoughts on this knife um, when it comes to the, the normal drift, which I'll touch on later sort of in my you know, should you buy this segment of this um, review? Um, but I do think this is really well made. I think Quiet Carry um, always makes high quality stuff. Their fit and finish is really good. The materials are always very good. Um, you guys know a lot of their, you know, their their gist or their. Uh, a lot of people are drawn to Quiet Carry because of their, um, you know, rust proof knives, and this is definitely in with the i believe they call it a yeah like under the on the website it's under ocean environments and the drift lc is the first one on the list um so definitely go check out the website down below currently on the website only one version of the drift lc is in stock or uh, out of stock and that looks like it's the black g10 version um but we're gonna get right into the materials so of course this has a very interesting g10 show scale side that looks like it has black in with it. I don't know how they were able to maintain that or able to do that, but that's very cool. Um, of course, you have the three lines down there, or the, excuse me, the four dots down there for Quiet Carry. It's kind of their maker's mark. Then on this side, you have a lock bar, or excuse me, a titanium frame lock side. Um, you guys can see it has a milled 3D or 3D milled titanium pot clip that works very well. It's very similar to the one that is on the large IQ. Um, I really like how they did that and on the, on the nine as well. Um, you have the four dots there as well. Thumb for deployment. You guys can see right there, LC200N on the blade steel. Quiet carry, nice kind of high polished stone wash. Uh, it's a very nice looking knife. They basically took the drift and made it a little bit bigger uh, and took out the um, choil on the drift. But it's a nice size knife. It definitely has a little bit of weight to it. Um, some quick specs for you guys. Uh, so the blade length is 3.4 inches, body length is 4.49 inches, it's considered a stone washed drop point. You have a ton of belly, comes down to a nice thin edge. Um, blade stock thickness is also pretty thin as well, which is very nice. Um, you do have a lock bar insert on this side, which is LC200N or z and steel, which is going right in, in line with the um, rust prevention on the quiet carry um, line. Um, open length 7.79 inches and the weight is 4.6 ounces. So it's definitely a heavy knife. Um, you know, I feel like they could have made it a little bit lighter. They did not do any internal milling at all on this. I feel like that could have been a little bit, you know, extra step that they did to make this a little bit lighter. Maybe a 3.5 ounce knife would be awesome. Um, but you have a backspacer back here with a lanyard um, area to run a lanyard through. I believe, yeah, this is only a righty carry knife. You can't switch it to lefty because of the different materials. Um, but yeah, I think that's all for materials. Of course, it's on bearings, um, ceramic bearings, I believe. Yeah, ceramic polyethylene bearings. It's very nice action. So we're going to jump right into that next. But thumb flick works very, very well. Middle finger flick also works very well. You guys can see. That closing action um, on the frame lock, you have plenty of lock bar access to get in there, which is very nice. Drops to your thumb, and it's it's a free swinger, guys. I mean, it's very very smooth, no blade play at all. Um, and really, Quiet Carry has been killing it with a lot of their new bearing models uh, that they put in knives. Because like the Drift and the Waypoint and some of the other stuff, um, the Chase, the Eddy, they're all washer knives. So they recently started getting into more EDC based or EDC focused options um, with bearings and the action is really really good you know it's this is very similar to the nine action which I loved um, I think it's just fun to fidget with it's fun to just kind of let it just boop lock in home um, 
but thumb flick works really well. Middle finger flick works really well. You can also slow roll it, slow, slow roll it as long as you're not putting like a ton of lock bar pressure on there. Um, you know, closing action is good. You can lefty flick it. You can middle finger flick it lefty if you kind of climb down here on the clip. I'm not very good at it, but eh, I've done it a few times. Obviously, lefties are more prone to, there we go, uh, prone to, you know, doing that a little bit easier than I am. Uh, but overall, action is phenomenal on this knife. It's very fun to fidget with, especially with no, no blade play at all, locked up nice and tight. And it just does that every single time. And that's very addicting. So um, huge thumbs up on the uh, action for the Drift LC. But next, we're going to talk about Ergos. And the Ergos are good in this knife. It's obviously, like I said, a bigger, a little bit bigger model than normal Drift. Of course, I took away the um, choil that they have on the Drift, which kind of is a disappointing. I feel like they could have really kept that and just basically made the Drift, which is bigger uh, with different materials. But Ergos are good. You do have jumping up top here. Um, the G10 provides a very nice texture. Uh, has, you know, it's, it's very kind of coarse sort of like a sandpaper, but it's a very like, um, you know, sort of relaxed sandpaper, if that makes any sense. But it makes for a very good grip on this knife. I can get four fingers on here very, very easily. Um, and this is basically, you're either doing a saber grip or a hammer grip in this knife most of the time, um, but you have a lot of belly. So for slicing and stuff like that, for push cuts through cardboard, you get a very good purchase on this knife. Uh, you can switch it around and do some some ninja fighting skills with Kevin over at the 7-Eleven on Saturday nights for Slurpees. But, um, you know, you pretty much, I mean, it's a straight line, but it's a little bit of a humpback, a little bit of a curvature. Basically here, you have a little bit of a curvature as well. And then here you have a finger indent, um, but very, very comfortable. You just get a very good purchase with this. Um, you know, it's, it's a bigger knife. So most style knives are, most bigger knives, this sort of style is very, very ergonomic and you just get a ton of purchase on this knife. Um, so yeah, uh, with the pot clip I wanted to touch on real quick, it is a milled clip. So it does have a little bit of standout from the knife, especially due to the, how it's basically uh, like a 90 degree squared off angle back there. Um, but you're far enough up off that where yes, I can feel it, but it is definitely not causing me any, you know, hotspot issues at all. Like unless you're just, unless you have huge mitts and you're back here, then you can feel it a little bit more. But you know, the way my hands are sort of gripping this knife, you can't really feel it too much, which is very, very nice. Um, so ergos are very good on this knife as well. Next up is carry. And the only thing that I really have to complain about with carry is the weight on this knife. I feel like if they would have done some internal milling on the titanium, they could have easily knocked it at least under four ounces. Uh, it's coming in at 4.6 ounces right now, which, you know, for the knife size and everything like that, it's not horrible. Um, but I just tend to prefer lighter weight knives, which I know can be done, um, just due to some weight reduction. Um, I don't know why they couldn't, you know, do any milling on this knife because it's it's pretty thick titanium. Like it's a nice thick slab of titanium in there. Um, so I really don't know or you know don't understand why they couldn't do that there. Uh, but other than that, it carries very very well. Um, I love this pot clip. It just it it looks awesome from an aesthetic standpoint. I love how it's milled. It has a sort of fatter end in the bottom. And it goes to the butt end of the knife, like you guys can see there. So it sits down in your pocket very well. This is all nicely rounded, contoured, whatever you want to call it. There's no jimping, you know, no sharp edges. So it's in your pocket and you go down to reach for, you know, uh, coins, chapstick, AirPods, medicine, something like that. You don't have to worry about having anything there to catch your hand and pulling it up out of your pocket. Um, I carry this in khakis quite a bit. Uh, when this first came in, I carried this for probably three or four days straight just because I was really digging on it. Um, and gym shorts around the house. I could notice a little bit just due to, you know, again, the weight. Um, but overall, no complaints at all. Just other than that weight, I feel like this is a really good model. Um, you know, fit and finish is good. Action is good. Uh, ergos are good. Carry is good with the pocket other than the weight. So really, it's just the weight that I have to complain about. Um, but that leads me, I guess, right into my category, excuse me, final category of price point and what I recommend this knife. Um, so the Drift is, sorry, Drift LC is coming in at $295 and the fully blacked out version, which has a black LC 200 end blade is $300. So we'll just call it 300 bucks. Um, I do think that's, you know, worth it. That's kind of quiet carries price range. They fall in, um, 
you know, the nine that I had in had fat carbon and a 20 CV blade for, I believe, 330. Um, so I feel like I feel like it maybe could be a little bit lower because if you look, you're getting, let's look at the original drift. So the original drift, you guys know, um, has Vanex steel and you can either get, um, there are three G10 options. You can get like a blue gray G10, a black G10 and a um, orange G10, which is 250. Those are all $250, which you get um, G10 on both sides, but then you get Vanex. So you get a better steel upgrade, but you're not getting a titanium frame lock. They're liner locks. Um, but then for the full titanium versions, they have um, they have five different options. They have some textured, they have some black wash, um, different things like that. And most of them are sold out on there, but they go from 300 to 305, or sorry, 300 to $310. And I just feel like you're getting, you know, when you're comparing the two, because that's kind of, I'm directly comparing it to the original Drift. You know, the original Drift, um, you you can get G10, but the G10 version is $250, where this has G10 and titanium for $290 or $295. Um, but you're also getting a better steel on the original Drift. You're getting Vanex, which is basically a upgraded LC200N. I have no complaints with LC200N. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a couple different knives in this steel and it's great for rust prevention um, and stuff like that. And it's a good, you know, for, for what I do for my EDC purposes, it works fine. Um, but Van X is just better. It has better edge retention. It's a little bit tougher um, and you're still getting that same rust prevention as you get an LC200N, but prohibitively it's a better steel. Um, so I think that this may be, the price point on this could be a little bit lower, maybe at least 275 but you know, I'm not going to sway anyone away from this knife because um, it is made very, very well. Action, like I said, is great. Ergos is great. Carry, other than it being a little bit heavy, is also great. So that, other than weight, that's my only complaint about this knife. I really thoroughly enjoyed it. I enjoyed carrying it. I enjoyed cutting with it with the little bit of cutting that I did with it. Um, I enjoyed just having it in because uh, it's at the base of its you know existence, a fantastic knife. I would just sway toward the original drift more because you're getting that choil. It's a little bit smaller and you're also getting Vanex um, and you get a little bit more options with the full titanium versions or the full G10 versions for different price points. Um, so when you're comparing it directly to the full titanium drift that you can get for basically the same price, I would lean towards that because again, different steel, full titanium, stuff like that. Um, but it is cool to see Quiet Carry sort of evolving their product line, throwing different things out there keeping it fresh and I definitely can appreciate them and I can applaud them for that. Um, so again, kind of to wrap everything up, 295 for the Drift LC. I personally think it's just a smidge too high. I think it could be a little bit lower. Um, but one thing, you know, at the end of the day, it's a fantastic knife made by a fantastic company. Uh, I love Quiet Carry. I fully plan on continuing to add stuff from their um, product line in my collection. They have a sale right now on the large IQ, which is like, a, I think it's like a 40% off sale, which I've been looking at so many different times because um, I really enjoyed that knife when I had it in on the uh, the pass around group. So I might pull the trigger on that. Um, but enough rambling on. Um, the LC200N Drift LC, great knife. Um, just maybe a little bit overpriced, but that's all subjective. So if you guys, basically, like I always say, if you like the design, get it because you're going to like the action. You're going to like the fit and finish. You're going to like how it feels in your hand nine times out of 10, almost 10 times out of 10. Um, so definitely don't let my opinion on the price sway you guys from buying it. If that's something you are looking forward to. Um, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed having it in. Um, again, JD, thank you so much for adding this to the pass around. Uh, I was very, very happy with my experience with it. So this was my full review on the quad carry drift LC. Again, huge shout out to JD for sending this bad boy in. Um, Leave a comment down below. What are your guys' opinions on it? I would love to hear what you guys have to say. But I'm going to wrap this up now. So thank you guys again so much for watching. I greatly appreciate each and every single one of you. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your morning, day, evening, night, whenever you're watching this. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.